Hello and welcome to News Now. I am DG Badimasi. Now, President Goodluck Jonathan is seeking $1 billion to fight Boko Haram. Now, he wants the money as loan. In a letter he sent to the House of Representatives, President Jonathan asked the members of the House to approve a request to borrow an external loan of $1 billion, which translates to $165 billion naira. According to the president, the loan would be used to upgrade the equipment of the armed forces in the fight against the insurgent group Boko Haram. The letter was read Wednesday morning during the House plenary session in Abuja. Now, parents of the schoolgirls abducted by militant Islamic sect Boko Haram have denied playing politics by refusing to meet President Goodluck Jonathan. The parents of the schoolgirls were supposed to meet the president on Tuesday, but the meeting failed to take place. According to a spokesperson for the Chibok parents, the meeting failed to take place because proper protocol had not been followed. And while President Jonathan said the parents had called off the meeting after being manipulated by the Bring Back Our Girls campaign group. On Monday, the president agreed to meet 12 parents and five of the girls who escaped shortly after being seized by Boko Haram following a request by Pakistani rights activist Malala Yousafzai. Chibok community spokesperson Dauda Ilya said the proposed meeting had been organized in a hurry, so there was no time to consult with all the parents. Chibok residents were very traumatized and people had lost trust in each other, he said. Well, you know, the, this meeting was scheduled uh, for 4 p.m. today. It was at the instance of uh, the uh, request that was made by Malala, you know, on the president. And the president graciously agreed within 24 hours to meet with them, and he actually gave an appointment for 4 p.m. Unfortunately, the Bring Back Our Girls leadership prevailed on the parents and the girls and stopped them from coming. Therefore, what happened was that they actually shunned the meeting with, the, with Mr. President. You know, and, you know, uh, because the, uh, the foreign media and everybody was, uh, was waiting for this meeting, since they were no longer coming, and they have, you know, they've made it expressly clear to us that they were, you know, they were not coming. In fact, that, that the girls were already just a few minutes away from Chibok. Well, you know, the, the, I mean, the meeting obviously was aborted, but was aborted by the failure of the, of the parents and the girls to, come, I mean, to show up. They actually shunned the meeting. The president was waiting. The vice president was, I mean, the president was waiting. The NSA was waiting. Top government officials were waiting to receive them and for, you know, private consultation, you know, with Mr. President, as promised. The question is, why would, is it that the Bring Back Our Girls campaigners now have an upper hand over the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? No, no, it's not a matter of upper hand. You know, you know, you, you know they, it, they, it was the leadership of the Bring Back Our Girls that brought them to Abuja. So, you know, that gave them uh, some leverage. They invited them to Abuja, they brought them to Abuja, so they more or less, I'm sure they accommodated them. So, you know, they have, you know, some leverage over them. But also, more importantly, is that it is obvious now that the Bring Back Our Girls, you know, were just interested in some showmanship, not really genuinely concerned, you know, with the plight of the children and with the plight of their parents. That is what has become quite obvious and quite, you know, clinically clear. Speaker of the House of Assembly in Yola, Omaru Fintari, has been sworn in as the state's acting governor following the impeachment of former governor of the state, Murtala Nyako, and his deputy, Bala Angulari, over charges of gross misconduct. Actually, Bala Angulari resigned from his position before the impeachment process began. Umaro was sworn in Tuesday by the former acting chief judge of the state, Ambrose Mamadi, at the council chamber of Government House. Now, he would preside over the affairs of the state as acting governor for the next three months when election, another governorship election, is expected to be held. The Senate has confirmed uh, commander of the commandant, actually, of the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRC Osita Chidoka, as minister. Also confirmed as minister is Olarawaju Abubakar, a lecturer with the University of Abuja. President Jonathan had nominated both men for ministerial positions and forwarded their names to the Senate for confirmation. Following their confirmation by the Senate, they will be sworn in by the president and assigned their various portfolios. 
The All Progressives Congress APC has accused President Jonathan of attempting to destroy what it calls key institutions in the country, particularly the opposition, all in a bid for a re-election in 2015. National Chairman of the APC, John Odigio Yegun, while addressing a press, press conference in Abuja, alleges that the president, in his desperation to hold on to power in 2015, has resorted to clamping down on the opposition by way of impeachment of governors in APC-controlled states. Oyegun said the governor of Adamawa State, Murtala Nyako, had been impeached at the instance of the president and his party. And Nasara State is the next uh, port of call as impeachment notice has been served to the governor, Omar Al-Makura. The APC chairman said the president's obsession with re-election is threatening democracy and the existence of the nation and called on him to apply caution on his action, which he said are sure to have grave consequences. And some business news now. The federal government has instructed the recently inaugurated board of the Bank of Industry to increase its existing credit portfolio to the micro, small and medium enterprises sector. Olusha Gwagaga, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, gave the directive at the inauguration of the board of directors of the bank in Abuja. The minister explained that the present arrangement where less than 15% of the bank's loan funds were being set towards the development of MSME sector was no longer acceptable. In light of this, Aganga said it was necessary for the board to conduct an upward review of the loan funds in a way that would permit the sector to create more jobs and generate wealth. Moving on to the foreign scene now, Israel has urged thousands of people in East and North Gaza to leave their homes as it, as it continues airstrikes. Uh, an Egyptian truce initiative on Tuesday failed to halt rocket attacks on Israel by Hamas militants and other groups. Israel, which had its uh, uh, first fatality on Tuesday, said senior Hamas militants had died in strikes on Gaza overnight. Palestinian officials say at least 213 people have died in Israel raids, including 10 killed overnight and four children who died later on Wednesday. An Israeli man was killed by a mortar shell fired from Gaza near the northern border with Israel. Now, Israel launched its Operation Protective Edge on July 8. Its stated objective is to halt Palestinian rocket attacks on Israel. But the United Nations says the majority of those killed in Gaza have been civilians. A Dutch court has ruled that the Netherlands is liable over the killings of more than 300 Bosniak, that's Bosnian Muslim men and boys, in Srebrenica in Bosnia-Herzegovina in July 1995. The men and boys were among 5,000 Bosniaks, mostly women and children, sheltering with Dutch UN peacekeepers. But the Dutch state was cleared over the deaths of more than 7,000 other men killed in and around Srebrenica. The Hague uh, District Court said that Dutch peacekeeping forces, uh, Dutch Bat, did do uh, enough, didn't do enough, sorry, to protect more than 300 of the Bosniaks and should have been aware of the potential for genocide to be committed. He said that the Dutch state must accept some degree of responsibility for what happened and pay compensation to the families of more than 300 victims. The Srebrenica massacre is considered Europe's worst since World War II. And on to sports, Juventus has hired former AC Milan coach Mas Maximiliano Allegri to replace Antonio Conte as manager of the club. His appointment comes uh, days after former coach Conte resigned from the club. Allegri has been hired on a salary of €2 million Euro on a two-year deal at the club, as a club, I should say, sick of fourth successive Serie A title. The 46-year-old previously coached Milan, with whom he won the Scudetto in 2010, and finished second in Juventus the following year. He was sacked in January 2014, following a disappointing start to the 2013-2014 season, leaving the Rosanari languishing in mid-table. Jamaican sprinter Safa Powell struggled to third position on his return from his doping suspension. The former world record holder ran a time of 10.30 seconds to finish third behind fellow Jamaican Julian Fort with Antoine Adams of St. Keats and Nevis in second. This was Powell's first competitive race since July 2013 when he ran at the Lausanne Diamond League meeting. He was suspended for, the 18, month, for 18 months by the IAAF for the use of banned substance. His suspension 
was later reduced to six months by the Court of Arbitration for Sports. Well, that's it on News Now. TV 360 News Now will be back again tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. I am Deji Badimasi. See you then.